Hey, how's it going guys? Tech Notice here, and today we're gonna talk about the Samsung Galaxy S9, the goods and the bads of it, and I'm gonna give you guys an overall thought about the device. Now, of course, with the launch of this device, they are highlighting mainly the camera aspect of it. Now, it seems like the entire event circulates around the camera of this new device. It now sports a f1.5 aperture plus a 2.4 aperture lens. Now, the thing that makes this camera stand out against other smartphone cameras is the physical aperture. This one can actually open and close to let in more or less light. Now you guys can see here on the screen that the user can choose between f1.5 or f2.4, let in more or less light depending on just a click of a button. Now the physical shutters actually close and open unlike other devices. I haven't seen this on any other smartphone, only on some high-end cameras, and this is probably one of the reasons why Samsung is highlighting it so much. Now talking about the camera, we do have an additional new feature that comes along with this. This is called the Super Super Slow Mo. It shoots in 940 frames per second. Like imagine that guys, 940 frames. You can see things just water droplets just drop down when it starts to rain. It's insane. You guys can do so many things with this. However, it can only record in 720p, which is still HD, so there's nothing to complain about there. In comparison, the iPhone 10 can shoot in 240 frames per second, so there's a three times difference there. Now, putting aside who stole what idea from who, we do have a brand new feature here. It's going to be called the AR Emoji. Now that probably reminds you of an emoji that Apple has recently brought up to their iPhone 10. You can set yourself up and send animated pictures throughout messages. This is however going to be going through regular SMS because Samsung doesn't have the equivalent of iMessage yet. Now continuing all the good things so far about this device, we do have a brand new updated Bixby 2.0. So she's able to live translate a bunch of stuff. However, in my uses with her, she isn't up to par with Siri just yet. Even though Siri is nowhere even near the bigger guys such as Google or Alexa, Bixby and Siri is still in the early stages right now. However, I do see that Siri has the upper hand. Now this next update probably has been taken out by another company as well, but they do finally have stereo speaker on the Samsung Galaxy S9. Now these pairs of speaker have been tuned by AKG, the same one that has been tuning our headphones that come along with Samsung devices. However, they did announce another partnership with Adobe Atmos. Now supposedly you guys are going to be able to listen to the same experience as you do inside a theater. I really doubt that at the moment. However, people that have attended the event are saying that it isn't as loud as the company advertised. I will be getting the Samsung Galaxy S9 ahead of availability. So if you guys want to get the earliest scoop, subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more. So I'm going to quickly run through the rest of the positives of this device because it doesn't seem like anything else has changed really. The Samsung Galaxy S8 and this one is so close together you wouldn't be able to tell the difference anyways. But here we go. Now we have fast wireless charging. We have a brand new LTE chip that allows speeds up to 1.2 gigabytes. Now if you guys watched the live event yourself, you probably would have asked yourself the same question here. But one of the presenters said something along this line. Before this technology that they released in the Samsung Galaxy S9, he had to wait for buffer for videos to load and everything of that line. So I'm just wondering what world is he living in right now? We have 4G LTE at all times going up to like 100 to 200 megabits per second. So what application is going to even require that much right now? As of right now, there is nothing that requires that technology. You guys are probably just going to download apps on your phone. And even if you're tethering it to your laptop, you wouldn't even be using a quarter of that speed. Everything before that point, he had to wait for it to buffer and whatnot. I just found that the most idiotic thing that he could have said. But moving on from that, we have a brand new color. It's more of like a livid purple, you guys can see right over here and you guys can decide for yourself. Samsung said this is a purple, but it's more of a pinkish color. So I'm, I'm not gonna be interested in that color. I might be picking up this color just for you guys, but I personally don't like this color at all. I probably will be sticking to black or blue anyways. And the last one, you guys probably guessed it. They moved the fingerprint scanner all the way to the bottom of the camera which is really nice, but they added it as a highlight feature, which I found a little bit crazy. Now you guys are all been waiting for, we're gonna jump onto the bad side, and there's gonna be a lot of haters for this. I know you guys are diehard Galaxy fans, and I was as well. I have the Samsung Galaxy S7, S8, and I even have some of the older ones such as the S5, but I moved over to the iPhone as my daily, just because it's a little bit more practical, a little bit more easy, and I don't have to worry about it too much. However, for my iPhone 10 right now, there are a couple features that I am regretting not having. Now just quickly running through the whole Samsung Galaxy S9 information that we have so far. The first one is going to be a little bit silly. They highlighted low light performance with their brand new camera system, which is really interesting. We'll have to check that out, see how much better is low light with this phone. But the picture that they posted up online showing off the brand new camera in low light looks super fuzzy. It looks like the camera is having a horrible time even detecting anything within that room. You guys can see how grainy it is overall. It would have been best if they just used a DSLR or Photoshop the image to highlight it but this picture with this parrot just looks horrible and you guys can probably see it on the screen right now and judge for yourself. Now another gripe here that I have is the difference between the Samsung Galaxy S9 
and the S9 Plus. Why are they making it a little bit different and a little bit better on the S9? I don't understand this at all. Right now, the iPhone 10 has all the features onto a smaller device, and this is the first time they're doing it, so I'm not judging Samsung at all, but the S9 is probably the more practical size that most people are gonna be using, but they won't be having the dual lens camera, and that's what we all want right now. It's kind of similar to the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus right now. I feel like the bigger the device, because without that feature, nobody is gonna be picking up the Plus size. And in comparison, before all this, Apple would actually put optical image stabilization in the plus size model and make it digital on the normal size, which I found insane. And now Samsung's doing the same thing. And while we're on that topic, the reverse is happening with the S9 Plus and the S9. So in the case of other phone manufacturers, the lower phone would actually have a lower PPI, whereas the larger one would have a higher PPI. But Samsung made it a little bit opposite here. The lower one has 570 PPI, whereas the 6.2 inch larger one has 529. So obviously not noticeable in our eyes, but the Samsung Galaxy S9 is gonna be much more clear than the S9 Plus. All right, and moving on to the next one, we have Intelligent Scan, sort of like a face ID. Now they're gonna be using the front face camera plus the iris scanner together. The funny thing here is at the bottom, it gives you a little text that says accuracy of Intelligent Scan may differ depending on surrounding conditions. So what they're saying is, it isn't as reliable. It will be using your iris scanner and we all know how gimmicky the iris scanner is. I had my Samsung Galaxy S8 for the majority of the time when it just came out and the iris scanner was just horrible. I had to angle it in front of my eyes in a perfect position where it would allow me to unlock. So I found that really inconvenient. Now they're putting both together, making it intelligent scans, but I can't really see this working because no matter what, for the security sake, we're gonna be having to put our eyes within those two ovals and the face unlock Apparently that has no security at all. You guys can fool it with just a piece of paper. And just quickly running down the rest of the list, we still don't have edge to edge display, although they are advertising it. Edge to edge display means that we're going from edge of the phone to the other edge of the phone. So you guys can argue how much you guys want, but this is not edge to edge. And the funny thing here is they're highlighting it again as the infinity display. And even on the front screen, you guys can see a really good mock-up of how a real edge to edge would look. They're advertising just the display itself without the borders or anything like that. So I know they are probably thinking of what real edge to edge is. They're just not implementing it right now because they don't know how to. I'm not saying that it's not a beautiful display, but just don't advertise something that isn't true. In the case of the iPhone 10, I can call this edge to edge other than the fact of the notch right there. We are going from one edge to the other edge to the other edge. So this is what the real term of edge to edge mean. Although we don't have the infinity display that wraps around the corner. And then the last two right here is we were all expecting an on-screen fingerprint scanner, which didn't make it on this version and it's probably gonna be coming out with the S10. So I really like the front facing portrait that's available on my iPhone 10 exclusively, and I'm not seeing it on the S9 at all, so probably it's not gonna be here, but we'll have to see when I get my hands on it. This should be it for this little update on the S9, guys. When I get my hands on it, I will show you everything in detail. For now, this should be it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys didn't, just drop me a dislike button if you did like button. Once again, peace out.